On a computer network, every endpoint uses a unique IP address. Applications that provide communication between endpoints use these addresses to identify communicating end devices. If you want to access a resource available on an endpoint, you have to use its IP address. For example, if you want to access a website stored on a server, you have to use the server's IP address. Generally, IP addresses are difficult for human to remember. IP addresses are made of numbers. Instead of numbers, humans prefer names to identify and access objects on the network. Let's take a simple example. Suppose, you want to access Google's website. Google's website's address is available in three formats, IPv4, IPv6, and name. Which format will you use on the browser to access Google's website? Most of us will use the name rather than the IPv4 and IPv6 formats. It is more convenient and easier to use, speak and type. But there is a problem, computers never use names to access any resources available on the network. The solution to this problem is mapping. Computers allow us to map IP addresses with their respective names. After mapping, when we access a resource by using its name, the computer automatically converts the name into the IP address. There are two ways to map IP addresses with names. Using the host's files and using the DNS server. Let's understand both methods. All operating systems include a file called hosts. You can use this file to map IP addresses and names. Each time you access a network resource, the operating system checks this file to find the corresponding IP address. Let's understand this through an example. In this video, I will use the virtual lab I have set up to practice RHCE exam topics. To learn how to set up this lab, you can check this video. The link to this video is available in the description. Since we are not allowed to use the internet during the exam, I didn't configure the virtual systems to use the host's internet connection. If you have set up the same virtual lab for practice, you also need to configure one virtual system to access the host's internet to complete the exercises explained in this video. To do this without messing with the existing setup, you can add a new LAN card and configure it as a bridge connection. A bridge connection allows the virtual machine to access the host's internet connection. After doing all exercises explained in this video, you can remove this LAN card. Now power on this virtual machine. Log in from the root account. Linux saves the host's file in the slash etc directory. By default, this file has only two entries. Both entries map the name localhost to the loopback address. To verify it, let's open a terminal and view this file. To view this file, we can use the cat command. As we can see here, this file has only two entries and both entries map the name localhost to the loopback address. This file stores entries in lines. Each line represents a single entry. Each entry includes two things an IP address and a name. The IP address is written first. The related name is written after a tab space. Localhost is the default host name on Linux. If you don't configure a host name or delete all configured host names, Linux uses this name as the default host name. To know more about the host names, you can check this video. This video explains everything you should know about host names on Linux. A loopback address is a reserved IP address. It is used to check the TCP IP protocol suite on the local system. If you get a reply from this address, it verifies that the TCP IP protocol is working fine on the local system. There are two versions of IP addresses. IPv4 and IPv6. In IPv4 the IP address 127.0.0.1 is reserved for the loopback address. In IPv6 the IP address 1 is reserved for the loopback address. When we access a network resource by using its name, Linux first checks this file to find its IP address. If it finds the corresponding IP address in this file, it uses that IP address to access the resource. To verify it, open the web browser and access Google's website.
Linux first checks the host's file to know which IP address is associated with the name google.com. If it does not find an entry in this file, it checks the DNS server to find the IP address associated with the name google.com. The DNS server finds the IP address associated with the name google.com and shares that IP address with the system. The system uses the shared IP address to access Google's website. If the system finds Google's IP address in the host's file, it does not check the DNS server for it. Right now, the host's file has no entry for the name google.com. Because of this, the browser will use the DNS server to find the IP address associated with the name google.com. The DNS server will find and share the IP address associated with the name google.com. To verify it, let's open this file. As we know, we have two versions of IP addresses IPv4 and IPv6. Let's add two entries for the name google.com one for each version. This entry will map the name google.com with a loopback address on IPv4 and this entry will map the name with a loopback address on IPv6. Now when we will access Google's website, the browser will check this file to know the IP address of Google's website. This file tells the browser that the IP address of Google's website is 127.0.0.1 on IPv4 and 1 on IPv6. The browser tries to load Google's website from these addresses. Since these addresses belong to the local system and the local system does not have Google's website, the browser fails to load Google's website. We mapped only the name google.com with a loopback address. We didn't map any other website's name. Because of this, the browser will use the DNS server to resolve the name of other websites. The DNS server will tell the actual IP address of each website to the browser. Because of this, you will be able to access other websites. As you can see here, we can access other websites but we can't access Google's website. It verifies that the system uses the host's file to resolve a name in the first place. If it does not find an entry in the host's file for a name, only then it sends a query to the DNS server to find the corresponding IP address of that name. Now, open the host's file again. Remove the entries that we added here. Save the file. Use the cat command to verify the change. As we can see here, the entries that were mapping the name google.com with loopback addresses have gone. Now access Google's website again. As you can see here, now we can access Google's website again. At this time, the host's file does not have an entry for Google's website. Since the host's file does not have an entry for Google's website, the browser uses the DNS server to resolve the name google.com. The DNS server tells the actual IP address of google.com to the browser and the browser accesses the website. That's all for this video. If you have any comments, suggestions, or feedback about this video, please share them in the comment section given below.